no big name. So obviously we need new players, but instead of going down the route of of big names, maybe you're talking about youngsters perhaps, maybe with a bit of enthusiasm to play here at Manchester United. Yeah, I mean, as Paddy knows, over the years, Stuart, we've always had youngsters here and, mm. and ever since I've joined the club in 1969, if you were good enough, you were old enough. Is that right, Pat? Yeah, that was, a, course, that was yeah. always a sort of thing. And um, we have got some decent youngsters um, coming through, as we've talked about, Greenwood, Garner, Chung, mm. little Gomez as well, yeah. he's a terrific little footballer. Yeah. But are they, at the minute, Stuart, is it fair to throw them right in at the minute, the present state we're in? I don't think it is. I do still think we need proven experience. players to come, experience yeah. to come and help these kids. That's what I think that we need. I at don't the club. think anybody would disagree with there, Sam. Hmm. Would what? you would you go down that route? Though, oh yeah. No, yeah. Instead of bringing right, we're going to bring in. But this Galactica to, or whatever you They'll do. have to bring in a couple of players. You, you, you're talking about Galactica, but you, you want players to come in that want to play for Manchester yeah. United. You don't want somebody to come in on a Galactica and I'm going to take the money and I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, as soon as things don't go, I'm off. That, that's the big problem. But when you've got kids like Sammy mentioned, they're young kids, they'll be out in that pitch and die for you. Mm. And mm. that's what Manchester United did at the present moment in time. Not only the fact that they're talking about dying for you, I don't mean that in that aspect of it, but going out there and doing their utmost. But they're talented kids. I mean, that's the ones we know about. Mm. That's the ones we know about. Maybe you better speak to Nicky Button, see what his. Maybe Nicky wouldn't want to put too much pressure, too much pressure on the generation. Yeah. yeah, John. Sorry, let's go back to you. And uh, anything else for, from you? I, I didn't. I didn't really mean to say kids. What I try. What I was trying to say was there are people like the centre back at less. Not a galactic, oh, but a damn good player. Maguire. Yeah. Uh, this guy we're talking about from Swansea. He, yeah. He's going to be, he's got a bit of experience. Yeah, he's he's well. okay. Daniel James, is it? Yeah. Yeah, we've got a goalkeeper at Sheffield United. Henderson. Had rave report. Yeah. So why go out and, uh, and take a Real Madrid cast flight, whatever his name is, Navas? Why not give that lad a chance? Why not give Romero a chance? I don't I, say just kids, but by John, to, John. To be fair, I don't. I don't think the goalkeeping's a problem. All right. I don't think we've got, we've got two top class goalkeepers here, and probably three in actual fact. I don't think that's a problem for the goalkeeping situation. John, how many players are you looking at realistic, realistically to come in over the summer? Of, of the really experienced the top line players, no more than two. Really? I and think, then I think any more than that. I John, think three, maybe and then, at least. And then perhaps two or three, like Maguire, even Zaha back, who are well versed but not Galacticos. I think Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire, the centre half, I would certainly not want to play against. No. But not only that, Pat, he can play as well. He can play as well. He's good football. So he's an all round centre half, yeah. which I think yeah, we need. Yeah. Comfortable yeah. people bringing the ball out of defence. Yeah. Maguire's definitely that. Yeah. All right, uh, John, thanks very much for that. 016-1236-1968. We're now going to go to Miami. If only we were. <laughs> we're going to go to Miami and we're going to speak to Harvey. Hi, Harvey. Hi. You okay? How are you? Yeah, we're good. Away you go. Um, yeah, I just had two points, uh, if I may. Um, number one is Paul Popper, who I'd like to defend him. He's one of the best players in the world. He's a World Cup winner. He was voted in the PFA Team of the Year by his fellow uh, peers, not by journalists or ill-informed pundits. And, um, you know, he's been an amazing player for us. Secondly, in connection with that, I don't understand why people are talking about a total rebuild of the team. Once Oli arrived, we went on a phenomenal run of games. We were unbeaten. We were the form team in the league. We beat uh, Arsenal away, Chelsea away in the cup. We beat Spurs away in the league, uh, a game which uh, their manager said was the best game Spurs have played all season. And... Um, I just don't understand. I think people have uh, lost lost perspective. I mean, we've got a fabulous team. Those players are all there, with the exception of 
selling Herrera, which I just do not understand why we sold him. He's absolutely superb player. And similarly, Valencia, I appreciate he may have had some injuries, but he's a top-class player. But the team just did and lost a bit of form when Paul Pogba was either in the team on his own or wasn't in the team because he'd been helped with Herrera and Matic, who were brilliant. And uh, the whole team functioned. He can't do it on his own. He needs top players around him. And we lost Matic, we lost Herrera, Popper was suspended for a couple of games, and we had a couple of unexpected results, losing to Wolves in the Cup and in the league. And let's be, let's be fair, you know, if we had beaten Chelsea the other week, yeah. but we drew, we would have beaten Huddersfield on the way, and we would have beaten Cardiff uh, yesterday. We wouldn't have played a weakened team against Cardiff. We would have had the full team, and we would have qualified in the top four. So why on earth are people talking about a total rebuild and also uh, selling one of the best players in the world, a World Cup winner? Well, I'd suggest probably because ultimately we finished 32 points behind Manchester City and haven't been in the top four in four of the last six seasons. It's probably why people are thinking there needs to be a rebuild. But you'd want a rebuild with Paul Pogba at the, at the, at the forefront of it. But the question is... Is he still going to be here, Paddy? Does he want to be here? Does he need to come out and say he wants to be here? You know as well as I do, he wants to be here. He wants to play here. He's always wanted to play here, in actual fact, since he was a kid. I don't think he even wants to go the first time round. But the media are putting so much pressure on him now, you know, as if he's the one to blame for everything. Mm. Yeah, because he's like the, the big player what he is. Yeah. It's, it's hard to say he's a World Cup winner. He's done unbelievable at Juventus as well. <coughs> he's come here. But of course there's going to be pressure on Pogba when he comes here to turn it on. Everyone can see Paddy's a player. Yeah. But it's just in certain big games, I think he, we needed somebody to take a grip of the game. And everyone's looking for Pogba to do that. And I don't think he did it. I don't think he put his stamp on the game. You need more than one. But you need more than one yeah, player, absolutely, Pat. One, yeah. And I think that's the problem. Will there be a problem bringing in players when you can offer them Thursday night football next season? Is that an issue? I don't. I think out there, there's a lot of players still want to play for Manchester United. The attraction of the club's name is still very big worldwide, and I'm certain players will want to come here. But who? That's the big problem. Who? All right, Ravi. Thank you for that. Harvey then doesn't think there needs to be a, a total rebuild. It'd be interesting to know what you think. No one six one two three six nineteen sixty eight. Dave in Telford. I think Dave might think there should be a rebuild. Hi, Dave. Um, hi Stuart, hi okay. Paddy, hi, Dave. Uh, hi Sammy. Hi, um, Dave. Yeah, like everybody else, I'm badly in need of some therapy at the moment. <laughs> um, I phoned up last year in the dark days in November before Jose was sacked to raise the issue of transfer targets last summer, whereby Jose identified five players he wanted to sign and we never ended up with, with any of them. Um, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit, little bit worried that um, despite being... 19 points behind City last season and 32 points behind them this season um, that you know we're not going to do what we need to do to strengthen the squad you know there is a there is a quote in the paper which worried me over the weekend that um, you know it says Solskjaer does not expect to make a significant number of signings this summer uh, and is aware that he must find a way to improve the players he already has which I think we'll, we'll we'd uh, obviously I'll heartily agree with, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of getting the best out of what we've got. We desperately, desperately need some, some, uh, some new players and a complete uh, ch change of change of em emphasis on the uh, work rate and the, and, and the work ethic, really, uh, because it's been really, really poor. I, I, I honestly think we're one of the laziest teams in in the Premier League, really, in terms of uh, getting about the pitch and. Um, you know, the first thing in any game really is to, uh, you know, obviously win the physical battle, isn't it? Work harder than your opponents. But, um, you know, th th there are a number of... I, I think what we, what we need to be is, is really imaginative. You know, obviously, yeah, don't go out and, and, and look at uh, Galacticos. I think we've got to get a mixture of youth and experience. And, um, you know, I, 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 I think the, the policy that has worked in the, in the past is that, you know, players who are coming towards the end of their career, um, you know, can still make a telling contribution. I'll give you two examples, Robin Van Persie, Vlatan mm -hmm. in recent years, you know, people at that end of their careers who could come in and do a job for us for a couple of seasons and it wouldn't cost the earth, you know, whereas... 
players I've got on my list, you know, I'd go for Kante, Eriksen. Yeah. I think Modric is, is, is on, on the way in at uh, Real Madrid. I think they've indicated they might be prepared to release him. You could probably pick Modric up, you know, at a modest fee. Bale, well, I wouldn't take Bale uh, on a permanent transfer. I'd take him on loan. Uh, but, you know, then there's the likes of wan at Palace, Matt Doherty at Wolves as a right-back. John talked earlier about Harry Maguire. Um, and, and then I'd go for youth with somebody like Madison at Leicester. He looks a good, uh, a good, a good player. player. And obviously Daniel James at, um, at Swansea. All right, Dave. Well, Dave has mentioned Kante there. Ericsson, well, we take yeah, him Kante, Kante, Ericsson, a lot of good like a, yeah, Obviously you a lot of good players. He's mentioned a lot of good players. Are those <laughs> players, though, realistically achievable? Well, how much would that yeah. cost you, Stuart, to get all them players? And I agree with what they have said that they're great, brilliant players. Yeah. But how much would it cost? They actually, and plus the fact their managers would never ever want them to leave yeah, the football talking, club at the minute. About players that are very important to that, very important to that team. Club, yeah. yeah, and it would cost a fortune if you ever did want. I mean, them. The kid at Leicester, Madison's a top class yeah. player. Yeah. Top class. They're not going to let him go unless the money's right. Unless the money's right, and because it's Manchester United, that will be yeah. as would much you, as you like. Bale is obviously getting bombed out at Real Madrid. Would you? Would you bring Bale? I would, I would take a chance on him. Sure. I would. I would take a yeah. chance on him. Yeah. Yeah, he's, I mean, I haven't seen him playing for ages because I don't see much of Spanish football. Well, he's had a few player. injuries, Pat. Yeah. He has. That's, a, that's problem. maybe a problem yeah. with, uh, with Dredd as well. He hasn't played a lot of games through injuries. But is but that a classic example of a signing we don't need in terms of a Galactico? Instead of going for someone like that, should we be going for some of the younger players that uh, that uh, Dave and Telford no, just Maybe made? if you got him for a year or two, so yeah. that, would be that could be enough. But they get his experienced goal. player. And the funny thing about it, I, I, I go back a few years. I think he wanted to come here. He did, at one yeah, stage. from one, one stage. He but he's a type of player that the, the fans would love as well. Stuart yeah. here, Bale will, would actually get the fans off their seats, you know. And we need them type of players at Old Trafford. Yeah. Although in saying that, yes. We all like to see those sort of players, but if you have a look at our record this season, we've conceded 54 goals. That's disgraceful. Is that, rather than the razzle-dazzle players up front, no. should we be looking at the back? 100%. Yeah. To win leagues, you've got to be solid. Exactly. You've got to have the goalkeeper and you've got to have solid uh, defenders. Back four, yeah. And uh, start from there, and I think that's a point that we've got to look at. You can't concede that many goals, Stuart, and expect to win a title. No. Right, Keith in Boston is, is next up. Now then, Keith, how are you? Hiya, Stuart. All right. Hiya, Bannett. Hi, Hiya, Keith. Family, Matt. I am fine. I spoke to you the other week, Stuart, if you remember. Yeah. Right, Stuart, I've got three points, basically. Uh, we don't need a massive rebuild. We've got some very good young players who are out online. We've got Timmy Fossey, Mantha, Axel, Tins, they beat all. We've playing good football, and that is a good centre half for a start. And there is a problem as well. We, we keep talking about we want five or six players. I'll be honest with you. I'll be brutally honest. I was very disappointed yesterday because I thought, and a lot of the people who were coming on the bus with me last night where we were on the way home, we actually thought that Anders Herrera should have been made the captain of the club because he's the type of player you want. He used to fight for everything. We've got nobody fights in the midfield. Yesterday, you could look at this, yesterday's performance you got Scott McTominay, uh, when he came on Martial, and the young Mason, Mason Greenwood. Three outstanding players. We need some defenders, but we, we let some good defenders go out on loan. We should be building them up in the club, getting them integrated into the first team. It's all right saying they're learning the trade out on loan. They're learning it in a lower league where they should be in the top league to learn it if we're going to loan them out. And uh, I don't know if there's all this truth about Pombo, if he is going to go to Real Madrid or if he's not going to go to Real Madrid. He's a fantastic player, but Sammy Mackett, the nail on the head, his work rate is not right. He, he's lazy at times, and that's no good. You've got to put it in 100% every game. You can have a bad game, we you know, but as long as you put in the effort in, the fans will love you. I've never heard a crowd at Old Trafford yesterday so quiet. I've never known an Old Trafford crowd, and I sit in the strip for them, boo the players off at half time. And, and I'll be quite honest with you, most of us would just say, well, we ain't going to stop for the walk round, because why haven't we got to applaud this year? Yeah. So let's be honest. Yeah, Keith, very interesting. I mean, Sammy, when you came in, you were saying to me you'd never seen 
the, the ground sort of empty so quickly no. in a home game? Never, Stuart. I mean, I, I was talking to Pat about it. I mean, mm. I know it was a bad performance and stuff like that, but, you know, the fans usually stay. They see the clap the players. The, the last game. The last game of the season yeah. at Old Trafford. I've never seen the ground empty so much. So yeah. soon as well. 20 minutes before the end, they were, yeah. the, the ground was half empty. You make a good point, Keith, about young Axel, who's done a great job at Villa and may still... Uh, end up getting into the Premier League and uh, Ollie has been speaking about him actually uh, as well suggesting he's looking forward to seeing him in pre-season because he's had some great experience out on loan. We're talking about needing reinforcements for the defence and Axel's getting great experience. In the well let me tell you something I wouldn't want to play against them yeah. and I like defenders like that I don't mm. want to play against them because no. he's going to hurt me. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. We don't have a lot of players in our team that do that and that's a fact. But you know the big, the big problem we've got, I think, as well, we don't have one dominant figure, maybe, I certainly should think in the middle of the park anyway, as a captain that's having no. a go at you. Look at Roy Keane. We haven't had that for Brian years. Robson. We haven't had that Bloody for years, buddy. Oh, dear me. Well, frightening. he was bringing in Ander Herrera, saying yeah. he thought he should have been captain and he should still be I'm here. I don't know if he's got the strongest character. I don't think he's got that personality of the two you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Herrera. Herrera. <laughs> yeah. Effort. Yeah, box to box, eh? he, he gives 100%. But as Paddy said, you want somebody who's going to get a grip of somebody and say, hey, I need yeah, more you, from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, We haven't got that, Stuart. Fit the life out of his own Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Position. Yeah. All right, Keith, thank you for that. I have plenty of time for you to have your say tonight. You know what to do. Cool email. Tweet. I'll just get through some emails here. Neil and Maidstone, people will rightly be angry and disappointed about yesterday and the season in general. There'll be changes on and off the pitch. The biggest issue that needs to be addressed is one of attitude. Because doing things the United way is the most important change. For the last few years, that's been lost, and a long overdue purge is needed. In hindsight, maybe this season has been a blessing in disguise, because if things had just been OK, the big changes might not happen. And from Denton, Ollie is so right. Thank goodness this dismal season is over. I fully support Ollie and plead that he's given time to rebuild. It's his job, but he must think carefully about who he keeps, who he lets go. And if passion and pride aren't equal to skill, mm -hmm. then they do not belong at United. I've watched supposed world-class players go through the motions, seemingly not caring about anything other than their paycheck. We'll be back, but there are no magic wands, just effort, commitment and passion. It's a good point, Anne, although we were saying you might want to get rid of players, but it's not quite as easy as that, no is chance. it? No, not quite as easy, easy as that. No chance. Not, not when people are on good contracts, Stuart, yeah. and on a lot of money. They're, they're not going to go out easy. No chance. No. And this one from Rick, who says, Rashford and Greenwood are the new York and Cole next season. <laughs> Watch this space, says Rick. And wouldn't that be nice? Because obviously you've got two homegrown players, and uh, obviously Rashford obviously already... Uh, a, a first teamer and has been regularly for the last two or three years. Greenwood, who knows? Who knows what will happen to him? He's got the ability, Steve. No, no question about that. He's got yeah. the ability. Yeah. I, I just thought how confident he was when he came on the pitch, and I think that's fantastic. Well, it's, a bit of pre it's a better pressure though, Pat, putting that to them to Jorgen Cole. I just say, I, I just say <laughs> well, we've only been working together here for 12 years, yeah. but he still calls me Steve. <laughs> <laughs> 